Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, it's so nice to see you all out there in, in virtual land. Uh, my <laughs> name is Erin Scott. Uh, I am the co-executive director for Inspired Word Cafe. Uh, I'm down here at the Alternator Center for Contemporary Arts. So we're live streaming. We've got a couple of poets who will share tonight here with us in space. Uh, and then the rest joining us uh, from all over the place, which is very exciting. Uh, so if you haven't yet, please go ahead and mute yourself. That'll allow us to have really nice sound quality for all of our poets as they're sharing with us tonight. If you are one of the poets who will be sharing, of course, when we welcome you to our virtual stage, you may unmute yourself at that point in time. Um, yeah, so a couple of things first, right off the bat, I want to just remind everybody that, or let you know that this uh, is being recorded. Um, so if you're uncomfortable with being recorded at all, uh, please feel free to deactivate your video and mute yourself, then none of yourself, your image, your likeness will be recorded. Uh, we simply take these recordings and, and uh, archive them through our YouTube, as well as taking some of the audio and using it for our IWC podcast. Um, I would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and ancestral territories of the Silk Okanagan peoples. It's really a privilege to be able to host all of our programming here at Inspired Word Cafe on this land. Uh, and I invite everybody who is out there to please, in the chat window, share with us where you are, if you know whose land you're on, and if you don't, maybe to take some time, we invite you to take some time to figure out uh, which treaty you might be living in, whose land you might be, be occupying and being allowed to, to subsist on. I'm going to be a little breathless because I am very pregnant. Um, and that makes my lungs up here instead of down here where they should be. Uh, we are here at the Alternator Center for Contemporary Art. As you can see behind me, there is an exhibit happening right now by an artist named Marguerite McIntosh. This um, is in the members gallery. So we're in the small little tucked in corner and this show is called From Away and it's quite beautiful. So I recommend coming down and, and checking it out if you have time and, and are able to do so. Otherwise, enjoy from behind me. Um, so some housekeeping. Before we get going, we've got quite a few poets tonight, so I'm going to jump in. We had a little bit of delay. I want to first thank some of our sponsors, the City of Kelowna, um, Faculty of Creative and Critical Studies up at the University of British Columbia, and of course, our, our home, our house, the Alternator Center for Contemporary Art. So thank you to all of those who continue to support Inspired Word Cafe and make this possible. All right. Oh yeah. There's a, you guys were a little delayed there, but you did it, you got there. Um, 
IWC has been so busy. We had a lot of layover in some of our programming that would have happened back in the spring. So we've got a whole slew of really exciting things coming up this month. So I wanted to let you guys know about some of those. We have our uh, Open Works documentary screening is happening next Thursday, November 12th at 6.30. That will be on Zoom uh, again, big shocker. Uh, but this documentary is about nine minutes long. It's part of a larger project that we've been working on with Professor Matt Rader at UBC around accessibility and how Inspired Word Cafe navigates and, and works through different points of access with our community at large. So the, the documentary kind of discusses some of these things and, and reflects upon what IWC is, who we are, and some of our values. It's a really, really amazing little documentary that's been put together. So I strongly suggest coming out to check that out. Uh, and then our big, big one, we have Meta Cabaret coming up on November 20th. We have visiting poets Elle Jones and Tanya Evanson coming in, coming in from Halifax and Montreal. They are incredible powerhouse poets. Like you do not want to miss their performances. Uh, we also have local performers, Michael V. Smith, Ari Sipes, and IWC's very own Ken Don't Cry, who are going to be performing live on stage that night, so please tune into that. Uh, on November 21st, Elle Jones and Tanya Evanson will each host a writing-focused workshop, which will be free and open to the public, so please check all of our info on Facebook and our website to figure out how you, in La La Land, can be a part of it. Okay, what else do I have to talk about? Oh, yes. So over in our house, uh, both Cole and I are poets. So we both kind of have these wide ranging and diverse networks of other poets and other producers working in the poetry world. And we've had this really interesting phenomenon where because of COVID shutdowns, because of everything going virtual, suddenly we are able to be invited to do open mics in, where was it? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. And so it was sort of like, wow, I wonder what other open mics are out there and what other things that we can participate in as poets of a global community. Uh, so we wanted to share, I looked some stuff up and wanted to share some things with all of you to maybe inspire you to reach out and, and get, you know, on stage in New York. So Victoria Poetry Project, they have an open mic happening next week, Wednesday, November 11th at 8 p.m. Their sign up is between 4.30 and 7.30 that day. So you can find more about them on Facebook. Uh, then we've got Accent Open Mic, which is based out of Montreal. They don't have anything listed as of today, but they did one in October. So hopefully they're just getting their wheels turning to get something going uh, over there. Then we have Argo Books. Uh, which has all kinds of really cool, interesting online literary programming, um, some access conversations, Japanese memoir writing, all a really, really wide range of um, really interesting stuff to check out, all for free. Um, and then there's the Lawn Chair Soiree, which is a really great title. I really love that as a, a name. They're also Montreal-based, and so on November 19th, they have an event with a couple of readers who will be reading from current works, uh, but a small open mic as well. So that's at 3.45 Pacific Standard Time, which cracked me up because I think everybody on the East Coast thinks that we don't work, all of us who live out in the West Coast of Canada. So they, they do it on their time, and we're not at work at 3.45. We can read poems. And that's it. So I will share some of those in the in the chat window with all of you and uh, keep posting through our, our Facebook and stuff so you can kind of stay connected and stay inspired and keep writing. Um, and that's that's it for my rambling. I do want to remind you that our chat is amazing and fun and please show a lot of love for all of our uh, poets who are sharing. It takes a lot to get on stage even from the comfort of your own home, maybe more so because you're not 
feeding off of the energy of all of these people in space with you physically together. So please go on there and snap and clap. And last open mic, we made fun of Cole most of the night while he hosted. So I invite you to get redemption and make fun of me most of the night through the chat window. <laughs> yeah, see Cole's booing me right now. So we're back, IWC is in action. Okay, enough, no more from me. So our first poet up to the mic tonight is here with us right at the alternator. Uh, she's a really wonderful writer. She's been coming out since before. She was of legal adult age, and now she is legally an adult, and we're really proud of her for that. Please put your hands together for Maddie Bishop. All right, there we go. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm trying to figure out how to just turn it over here. All right. Um, so I have two poems tonight, and I haven't really done anything since February, and it's a little weird here because there's only three people. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to do my best to, you know, make it cool. Um, oh, can I get Sophie to the mic? Okay. That's good. Okay. Oh, no, she was someone was asking in chat. Oh. Okay. All right. Mom, I'm not the charcoal smoldering red, and I'm not the candle light flickering insistently. I'm not the kindling nor the spark. I'm not the straightening iron that was left on. I'm not the explosion nor the gasoline that caught it. I'm not the house on fire on Tompkins Place in 2009. I'm not the arsonist. I'm not the crime being committed. I'm not the Bath and Body Works pecan pumpkin waffle scented three wick in our living room. I am the grease fire and no one had baking soda. I am the wildfighter in the world of my fucking Australia. I am the cigarette they were warned to stamp out completely, but they can't. I am the propane barbecue on our deck and I will grill anyone who tries to turn me off until they are far past well done. They are bone dry. I cremate the bodies of those who don't believe me. I incinerate the words they use to use me. I'm a force of goddamn nature. And yes, the rain will always come back and my ashes will always fizzle in pain. But with every storm comes lightning. Trust that I am every bit as much of an infinite fuel source as I believe I am. Perhaps I've let myself become dim before. I've allowed myself to be the candle and the lantern, guided the way instead of clearing the path. Please may leave me when I say this, Mom. Just because I'm dying out doesn't mean I'm dead. Just because my light is waning doesn't mean I won't shine bright again because you gave birth to the fucking sun and she has never stopped beating down on us. Because I may only be the spark right now, but a spark is all it takes to start a wildfire. And I'm looking for a forest to burn. I like the little, the little clap in between. That's, very, that's a good touch. <laughs> All right, um, I don't really have a title for this one, um, but yeah, all right. I don't know if you forgot you loved me or if it was a conscious choice. If I was a happy little accent in your Bob Ross tutorial or that bothersome mistake you couldn't cover up with a stroke of phthalo blue. When, I, when everyone else made me believe I was doing something so wrong, I thought you'd stay with me, stand up for me and tell me I didn't have to be scared. I thought it'd always be your Renaissance kid your favorite, almost my family. And when you erased me from your life, I didn't realize it would hurt so much. You helped to paint me into my own confidence, showed me how to accept criticism and praise, not only for the art I created in your class, but for who I was outside of that freezing cold portable. You made me your student, introduced me to my best friend, turned on the light board and traced me into existence. You gave me my own table and threw me a little sign. Maddie's table, don't touch. I cried in front of you, and you made my tears into a medium I could create with. You took my sorrow and showed me how to paint it in watercolor. I loved you. So when you erased me from your life, I didn't even notice. Not until I started to trace myself in ink. Not until it was too late. Hi, Grandma. 
<laughs> Hi, Grandma. My grandma doesn't know how to get on Zoom, so it's not not happening for my grandma. But that's very awesome that your grandma's here. Let's give it up one more time for the amazing. <laughs> Okay, and next up, forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong at all throughout the evening. I, I am trying, I, I promise, I promise you that. So next up, we have coming in virtually from her home. Uh, oh, it says, hey, Maddie, mom heard you. She, she's listening, so. <laughs> I hope to be able to do that to my children one day. <laughs> I can still hear you. Um, okay, next up to the mic. Uh, she's not been out to IWC in a while, but is not definitely not a first timer here. She is well known in the poetry community, published, prolific, quite wonderful. Please put your hands together for Sherry Hansen. <laughs> that you don't applaud between the poems because I am a Victorian guilt freak and I don't want to take anybody's time. <laughs> so, <clears throat> are you seeing what I am? The 50 year old in California wants to do some kind of online kink. I cannot be shocked because I laugh too hard. What am I supposed to do? I am curious, but don't ask. Punch my own face with my fist while you watch? The dating coach I paid for told me to put up pictures with a full body view, wearing a red dress and others with activities I love. So holding a book in front of me with only the red hair tangled beyond the cover is perfect. I stayed in 15 ways to Sunday. I am a student of Buddhism, eschewing drink and drugs and hunting, killing fish and board games. I stayed in 15 ways to Sunday. I want a literate man. A man in love with thought, his mind curious, like a hound pushing through, obscuring tall grasses, following a scent. And always I get, you are hot. This is not a conversation opener, I think. My possible responses lead nowhere. Yeah, baby, you bet your anonymous ass. Or, oh, I, I am so grateful for your refined attention. The carefully crafted and edited profile has too much information, much of it intended to deflect, defend, and disarm. Inevitably, the first message that arrives is, tell me about yourself. I answer, it is all in my profile. Oh, the 90-some men replied. I didn't read it. And the next one. The worm of Ouroboros is time eating its own ass. The learning turning in deadening circles, the same lessons like silk off of a worm spun into the same shawl, too small to draw around the shoulders, too thin to keep the icy ignorance from standing us still in whatever the now is that we cannot escape. Silent, slinking, predictable cycles of returning to where we began. Ignorance weaves us in our returning. They say my family, when I show up, the whole show is over. My brother who had cancer asked me not to visit him. My mother curled in fetal fight 
position, holding on with hands in claws, hissing paranoid messages into my ears. They're taking my morphine, she said. And at the last, I was alone with her and the sound of her tortured breath, the room expanding and contracting in size. And at the last, an aluminum balloon floated into her room and hung above her, the paper ribbon dangling just above her head. Happy birthday, it said in silver letters. Just me, the silence, and her rigid body finally giving up the fight. Happy birthday. Steven Tyler in Kelowna. I saw Steven Tyler playing the piano on the boardwalk in the hot sun one day. He was hanging with scarves and beads and so many necklaces I could not possibly untangle them with my eyes no matter how hard I tried. His hair hung festooning his head so carefully maneuvered to look dangerously unkempt. And I was so close to him. I was so close to him as if I were having lunch and he was across the table chewing rhythmically. I saw his toe turned out of his sandals and I thought, he has money? He could get that operated on? Turned right, redirected, perfected? And I thought, why would you wear sandals when your toe turns out? If he were sitting across the table eating lunch, perhaps the tomato soup would spill like a Jackson Pollock and be worth millions. <laughs> perhaps the rings on his fingers like some labyrinth David Moe magical being would mesmerize me and cast a spell. Even standing so close to him, I felt released from so much necessity this is primitive, this force. He stood in the sunshine playing the hell out of the piano. And we stood around him in our urban camouflage. None wanted to be visible against the gray and beige city streets. We were enchanted. And I imagined just Stephen and I breaking bread. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Sherry. It's, it's been a long time since I got to hear your poems, and that middle poem is so powerful and, and beautiful, and you have this wonderful ability to balance really intense, poignant images with humor. You've got this kind of wonderful humor about you. So thank you once again. Thank you. And that's how you get to be 76. Yeah, yeah, totally amazing. <laughs> Probably maybe like one of our younger poets and, and one of our older poets back to back and two powerhouse women. So thank you so much for showing us how it's done, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and now we're going to bring up to the stage one of IWC's longest collective members. He's been here even before I came on the scene. Uh, he's one of my dear friends. Please put your hands together for Mark Bertolucci. Hi, uh, everybody out there. How's it going? I, I'm a drummer in a rock and roll band, and I write lyric for poetry. This is called Magic Wand. Wonderful woman, lovely lady, come a little closer and drive me crazy. You must know I spend a lot of time with this vision in my mind of one day you being there so someday I can call you mine. We're like a pieces in the, and the pieces are ready to bond closer together now and forever with your touch, your magic wand. If I could be granted just one wish from behind my next closed door, all I would want to wish for is not having it to say someday anymore. Wonderful woman, lovely lady, come a little closer and take me away like a puzzle so complete 
the pieces of that bond so, 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 so strong. Now and, to get, now and forever with your touch, your magic wand. Thanks. <laughs> Lost in chaos. You are a companion. You are my friend. It's been a long while since I've seen your smile shining like the sun till no end. Pictures of memories etched into my mind. Times have gone on by. I just only ask why, what, how, where, and when did you ever say goodbye? I've been lost in chaos ever since you left. I've been lost in chaos, my heart broken, even deaf. Lost in chaos, lost in chaos. Does love ever pay off? Eagles are strange, like seasons change. The wind blows in days, they remain the same. <laughs> this one's called One Heart. There is you, here is me. I gotta say, I like what I see. When I ask myself if I deserve this loneliness, my best guess is hoping for that first kiss from someone, for, from someone I missed has been my bliss, my love and tenderness. One heart is all I want. One heart is all I need. One heart is the only reason my heart bleeds. Thanks. Okay, this next one's called This Heart of Mine. I'm itching for something and I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm just bitching because I'm pissed off because of the way it is. I'm lost without a smile. It's not, I don't know where to turn. It's not my style to let my heartache burn. They say it's easy come and easy go. Anyway, when I find out, I'll let you know. Word by word, line by line, it would all make sense in time. Somehow you will find if you feel my rhythm and you feel my rhyme, you have found your way into this heart of mine. Thanks. This next one's called, When What We Feel Is Love. I've been working hard and playing even harder, harder and faster than I ever have before. Music is on my mind and rhythm is in my soul and it's going out of control. Now I just want more and more so I've been seeming to find. My, my innovation is in me and my inspiration will set me free. Beyond, beyond as far as the eye can see, there is eternity for you and me. So when the emptiness starts to creep up, just remember it must be just the weather above because we are never alone when, when what we feel is love. Thanks. This is one, one of my newer ones. It's called Much Rather Be Lonely. As I sit here in silence, I took, I took a look back at my life and after all the pain, sacrifice and violence, I think of what I can say. I knew what was headed my way. I'm not just gonna sit here and feel sorry for myself because you're out there with someone else. I took a walk down this lonely road because I, I had a feeling I would not be treated like a normal human, human being like I've seen it somewhere before. So if that's the real you, I could put the past behind me. I'd much rather be lonely, and that is the truth. Thanks. Okay, this next one's called Breathe. I've lived a lot of nightmares and dreamed a lot of dreams. It hasn't been all peaches and cream. Now what can I say from the very start? I'm here to help you enjoy your day, so listen closely and follow your heart. Strive keeps you alive, thrust into a world one cannot believe. It takes many to succeed, so trade gently and slowly let it all out and breathe. Thanks. This next one's called Deep in Thought. Deep in thought I wrought with all the poverty and homelessness in the world, with all the poetry and loneliness one could have deserved, with all the wars and those government chores. What do we have in our future? What do we have in store? We've all made mistakes in the past. Life pushes us hard and fast. Though I've never been that far off tracks, so as you go, now you know, dreams do come true. You just have to do what you do. Thanks, guys. So Mark should enter a speed reciting contest. And you would win seven poems in three and a half minutes by Mark Bertolucci. It would be amazing. Uh, Mark has a really amazing story that the founder of Inspired Word Cafe, Rawl, always would share. Uh, Mark was hit by a car when he was four and was in a coma for how long? 25 days? 29 days. Um, and, and his parents were told that he might not ever read and write and, and, and walk and be able to do any of these things. So he is 
I think to us at IWC, you really embody what it means to be inspiring. And Cole and I talk about you all the time, man. And we just say like, Mark is never down and out. He always has a great attitude on him. He's always ready to take the world by storm. And for that, I applaud you and thank you for being a part of our collective, Mark. <laughs> always and forever. Okay. And now, uh, Nita is up next. She joined us last month. It was her first time sharing. She was so wonderful. She caught the IWC bug. And she's back tonight to share some more poems with us. Please put your hands together for Nita Faroki. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you. Thanks Aaron and Paul. Um, I was having some issues last time, so I hope I'm good and you guys can hear me. <laughs> I have a wired connection, so. Um, so obviously it's a super difficult, emotional time, um, challenging time in the world. So um, I want to start by asking you all to imagine with me a place of peace. Take a step forward. What do you see? I see a world where love is light. It kills all hate and notions to fight, where children are free to run as they please through lush green fields and parents have ease, where poverty is rare to see, overwhelmed instead with generosity, where communication has a place to actually communicate, no fear of others, no racist disease, no corrupt leaders, just hearts at ease. Oh, what a world that would be. No war, no hate, no enemies. These are the dreams I wish to see in writing. I see them immediately. The next one is called Stories. Each of us have stories to tell. I read that from an email this morning, made me ponder about you. What's your story? What were your childhood dreams? Who were you 10, 20, 30 years ago? Who are you now? Who do you wish to be? Take a journey with me. Look at yourself from a distance. Tell me the first thing about you. What's the first word that came to mind? Was it positive or negative? Look again. Tell me your shining qualities. Tell me your pain. At this moment, breathe. Close your eyes, shoulders down, relax your jaws. Listen to the sound of your surroundings. Feel your chest rise and fall. Stay here a little longer. Now, smile. Yes, smile. What are you grateful for? What did you do to deserve those gifts? Perhaps you worked really hard, perhaps you didn't. Either way, your feet are firm, blessings confirmed, you are standing strong, yes, you belong, head up, shoulders back. This is your story. Soak it in, feel the flow, claim your territory. So this next one is called growth. Growth is messy, hard, emotional. It's also inspiring, exhilarating, beautiful. The hard and messy is hard and messy, painful even, heartbreaking too. But when you come out stronger, wiser, more enriched, more thoughtful, more aware, you begin to understand you feel the growth, you see more clearly. 
I don't believe growth is quantifiable. I think it comes from the heart, through contentment, peace, reflection. Sometimes it comes from friends who nudged you and noticed. Thank those who helped you along the way. Thank those who hurt you too. Thank them, even silently, because you still grew through that. And perhaps they're going through their own growth that it had nothing to do with you. Understanding this is growth too. This next one is called Dear Grief. Dear Grief, you seem to come unannounced and creep your way in, take over hearts and minds and strive insanely to win. You take away joy, replace it with pain. You seep to our core while we try to keep sane. You make extra efforts to take full control, but we're coming to learn to just let you go. It takes time and practice to know when you appear, recognition and conscience, to put on our safety gear. We know who you are now, no stranger no more. So we've simply decided to show you the door. But one message for you and listen hard, you hear? Happiness is coming tomorrow and it's staying a while, dear. And then the final one is called Dream Big. Oh, sweet child, you used to dream big, but somewhere along the path, you lost yourself. The path you forecasted didn't quite come to be, so you shot yourself down constantly. You stunted your growth, you were bound to do more, but one interruption made you close the door. The worldly delights crave for you to explore, but you keep pressing red, continuing to ignore. You've closed your own lids while they remain open. The world is your oyster. Why limit it, hoping? To see, ah, oh, to see, to jump through the tides, run to the unknown using faith as a guide. Break down the walls, there's no room to whine. Get up, stand tall. Now is your time. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Nita. And, and we made it, Nita. We made it all the way through without any interference. And Yay! It was so nice to hear your poems from start to finish. Um, last month, we had internet connections. And even through that, Nita was still incredible and empowering. So it's really wonderful to have you back with some good, clear visuals and, and audio. So thank you. Give it up for Nita one more time. You guys are so delayed. Like, what's what's going on with your clapping there, audience? You're really it's like you're on a pre-recorded track or something. Um, I was supposed to throw to a trailer before Nita came on, but I was overzealous and just brought Nita right up. So to break it up a little bit here, we're gonna do a little trailer. IWC has recently created a podcast. We're moving into all of these other digital modes as a way of continuing to connect to our community and of course the broader global community that we are all a part of. So without further ado, our tech team is gonna put up a quick trailer of the IWC podcast. Hi, glad you could make it. Got your coffee? Tea? Scone? All right then, let's get started. Welcome, Welcome to the Inspired, Inspired Word Cafe. 
I'm Shimshon. And I'm M. And this is a podcast that brings all the excitement of the written and spoken words of the Inspired Word Cafe home to your headphones. Whether you've been to one of our reading events, poetry slams, or workshops before, or even if this is your first time hearing about the Inspired Word Cafe, we've got a little something to scratch your writerly, readerly, literary itches. That's right. Every month we'll be bringing you a well-caffeinated dose of poetry, prose, and all the fresh-brewed goodness of the written word. Here we'll be shining our coffeehouse spotlight on local writers from in and around the Okanagan Valley. Plus, stay tuned for our special episodes of Inspired Word Cafe live events, which we'll be dropping while they're hot. Subscribe now to the Inspired Word Cafe podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and the Google Podcast app. Trust me, you won't want to miss this one. Thanks Thanks for for stopping stopping by the the cafe. really wonderful podcast lots of incredible artists in our region and so we get to feature some of those we also um, have been putting up clips and things from some of our live shows as well so there's um, that that element too if you just so happen to miss out on an event with other things going on in all of your busy lives so big shout out to Shimshon and M, members of the IWC Collective who have taken on that initiative and are doing a really fantastic job of organizing and getting that content out to everybody. All right. So uh, next up is another collective member. She also happens to be the president of our board, which just shows how multi-talented all the people who work on this project are. You can be a board president, you can write poems, you can have three kids, like what can't you do out there? So please put your hands together for the lovely and wonderful Ricky Bassett. Thank you. You all hear me? I don't know if this microphone works. It's plugged into my computer, so I'm hoping so. Um, so I wrote this poem a while ago and um, I have reworked it since. Um, One part is a little bit loud, so I'll try to back off a little bit. Um, Standing in the kitchen, trying to make dinner. Thoughts only of, I can't, I can't. Get enough air, suffocating in thoughts, every breath harder to take, tears falling as rapidly as heart drums, staccato beats, I can't. Stop every sound from scraping. Nerves are raw and exposed. God damn it, shut up! I can't stop from breaking their hearts with unforgivable callousness. I can't. I can't give in to the eddy of guilt and fear and shame and panic. It keeps swirling me around and down until I'm dizzy and sick and tired. I am defeated by my own mind. Exhausted by the fight against strong currents of negativity, losing sight of the light as little by little by little it dims. A small pink floaty is thrown, something on which to cling, a place to float for just a moment. Until the storm can break and the sun can come through. And still, I resent the lifesaver. I should be stronger, have better stamina, Be smarter than to believe those were dolphins in the shark-infested water. A shake of the head to recenter. Open the little orange bottle and hate myself for the need. Remember the whole and imperfect babies I carried under and in my heart and still resent little blush capsules that saved me. I want them to know that I do my best. That cruelty of tone stems from selfish flaws fault only mine. I want the man to whom I promised my life and who promised me his to know that he is loved beyond words and time and meaningless gestures. So grateful that he loves me even when I am unlovable like this. Gather the broken pieces, slowly glue them together with their love and let the time do its work. Take deep breaths until the air in my lungs is enough and heartbeat is faster from love, not fear. Allow the tears 
to slowly stop until only a trail of salt is left on cheeks. Okay, and then I just have one more. I just one, uh, wrote this one the other day. Um, I have a, a baby, she is six months old now. And uh, we spend a lot of time in my bedroom because my husband works from home and she's very distracting to him. So we spend a lot of time in here. So you fell asleep while playing, just a gradual closing of eyes, little eyebrows raised, desperate to stay awake. Resistance was useless against the need. I sit on the floor of my room and you are limp and warm in my arms, slumbering with peace held in loving embrace. You are getting so big, heavy, and slightly awkward. My body rocks anyway, not wanting to disturb the calm. Daily tasks beckon, but I hesitate to encourage independence, to put you down, the last of my babies. I hold on just a little longer, breathing in the baby scent and looking at long eyelashes that rest on chubby cheeks. Soon you'll be crawling, each knee bend and hand slap taking you just a little bit further away, getting ready for the next adventure. Don't hurry, sweet baby. Let's rest together, enjoying the time we have before we both must move. Done, thank you so much. I like your microphone. <laughs> I look very professional, don't I? Mackenzie, get upstairs right now. <laughs> She's still in lesson, but thanks for sharing. You can try. It's been, a, it's been a while since you've been on stage. I'm it has been. And, and ask you how that felt. It felt amazing. I've actually been working on a few poems. I have like two or three others that I'm working on that just like really aren't ready yet. But yeah, that felt amazing. I'm so happy to be able to get on there and have like a new wave of creativity, which is why I haven't shared. That's awesome. So thank you so much, guys. Yay, thanks. Let's give it up one more time for Ricky. <laughs> sure if our next poet is here. I can never tell. Everybody uses interesting uh, screen names when they're on Zoom. Mine actually was changed by Mackenzie, and it's a bunch of little symbols and then duck. So every time I go on to a meeting, my name is duck. And I, I can't change it. I try. And it, she's, she's smarter than I am technologically at age seven, and she's <laughs> changed it. Um, but is there, Aurora, are you here? Are you out there? She might not be here. She's she's coming in from up north and maybe um, she's not with us here. I saw this great meme that, that said that uh, being on Zoom calls is like being at like a seance. I'm like, Aurora, can you hear us? Are you out there, Aurora? We can't see you. We can feel your presence though, Aurora. Give, give us a sign you're out there, Aurora. No, she's not here. Our, our magic wasn't strong enough tonight, crowd, but I appreciate your loving effort. Um, okay, and with that, we move to our last poet of the evening then. Last, but most definitely not least, one of my best friends. She was secretary for IWC's board a couple of years ago. She's recently relocated back to Saskatoon, Saskatchewan to work on her Master of Fine Arts in writing. She's an incredible poet. So she's actually coming to us from the future. Um, it's nine o'clock there, so that's pretty cool to have uh, a future earthling sharing poems with us. I'll stop rambling. Please put your hands together for the one and only Aaron Hebert. Oh, wow, look at that thing. Um, I'm so excited to be here. I've missed IWC so much. Um, so these online events have really, really been a gift for me. Um, if you remember me from 
IWC, I feel like I mostly read poems that were like me crying about missing Saskatoon. So I'm going to read a bunch of poems that are like me crying about now being in Saskatoon. Um, but before I start, I thought I would do my own little land acknowledgement. Um, I'm on Treaty 6 territory, territory of the Nahiawak, Anishinaabe, Nakoda, and Dene, and on the homeland of the Métis. So my first poem is called Leda by the South Saskatchewan. When in the attitude of Zeus, a goose yokes the sun to the sky, I recline meekly on a park bench. The old god roots through grass near me, and I watch him skittish, remembering the first hiss, the first time a goose unfurled his wings in pursuit of me. Geese have overrun the Vimy Memorial this year, disrupting wedding photos taken in the band shell. They can be shot around or cajoled to follow the families tearing up bread rolls and sandwich crusts. They're less afraid of us, not so aggressive. Now we wonder if this landscape ever belonged to us. So my second poem is called Eighth Street Arterial Road. As the city tore up the road near Arlington, Alex's heart was opened and a valve was replaced. The traffic expected to slow had its bulk off put onto Taylor and Circle Drive. In high school, we drove down 8th into the blue light of evening. The uninterrupted whir of tires over the deteriorating infrastructure was calming. When doctors pulled pacing wires from Alex's heart, she said it felt like someone was roughly flossing her ribs. And if eight stays torn up in the replacement of water mains, they might cancel cruise weekend. Might as well. Last year saw dozens of tickets, largely cell phone use and stunting. So my third poem, um, is called, well, it's about uh, this particular stone that you kind of see everywhere here. It's called Tyndall Stone, um, but the poem is called Fossiliferous. In commitment to the preservation of our softest parts, this stone was filled with corals, brachiopods, and others that recall the Cambrian Sea. Within the hardening lime, black threads of dolomite, a negative ripple of sunlight plunged through water. This record's used for the foundation of the apartment, decorative plating, and anything indicating age or status. The aquatic floor, the corner of 5th and 23rd, swims in the middle distance. The fluid behind my eyes drains slowly into my spinal column. My eyes work slowly to correct themselves, to record the light coming in. And then my last poem for you guys tonight um, is called White-Tailed Jackrabbit or Prairie Hare um, that are a nuisance in downtown Saskatoon. It's not that killing has no place, but killing rabbits is like dipping a bucket into the river. The problem is reborn quicker than we can do away with it. They lay out on grass, stop traffic in the downtown core, gnaw on tree bark along the riverfront. There are no predators. They are impressive in size. And if the health of the wildlife speaks to the health of the city, then step into the night between cars, take pleasure in abundance. As orange lamplight disappears into their black eyes, the brown summer coat peels from my shoulders, the stark white of my body reborn again. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You know, I think that the poems are not as sad about being in Saskatoon as you might perceive them to be. <laughs> there seems to be a little bit of masochistic enjoyment at being trapped in Saskatoon. <laughs> Those rabbits are also all over um, Alberta, too, so it makes me, you know, as prairie girls, I'm like, oh, I know those big-butted rabbits. 
Um, Erin is, is able to join us because she has internet in her house now. Uh, when I went to visit Erin uh, right at the end of February, right before the entire world closed down, um, she didn't have internet and so she rushed to try to get it before I came with little tiny baby Cedar. And we had a guy come in on my last day there to set it up and he very sweetly and innocently said to us, yeah, you know, you're, you're going to want to put that modem up on a table somewhere so that when the little guy starts tearing around, he's not pulling stuff down. And it became clear that he thought we were a lesbian couple and Cedar was our child. And our love is so deep that we chose not to correct him. So give it up one more time for Aaron Hebert for joining us. For <laughs> And that's it uh, for us here tonight at Inspired Word Cafe. I want to thank all of you wonderful people for tuning in and continuing to support the poets, staying connected uh, to things that matter and keep your mental health up there and thriving as best as we all can during these really hard times. Like I said, November 12th, documentary screening. Screening. <laughs> screening. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's just us screaming for an hour. Um, <laughs> Ken says it's a Freudian slip. Um, and then on November 20th is Meta Cabaret, which is going to be really fantastic, and you will not want to miss out on that. So I hope to see all of you lovely people there. Please remember, be gentle with yourself so you can be gentle with someone else. Thank you, and have a good night.